Is it on? Wait, is this recording? Okay, it's recording. Today we're talking about card extensions. As I said, today's going to be a particularly abstract day. So if we have some functors, um, how do I want to draw this? All right. Uh, if we have a functor f from c to e, and a functor k from c to d, a left Khan extension uh, of, oh, did I use G here? No, this is fine. Of F along K. So we're extending this functor along this functor. Um, OK, is a pair. Uh, which we'll call lan k f. So this is the left Khan extension along k. Can you Wait, f sorry. No, oh, of f along k. Yes, thank you. F along k. So this is the left Khan extension of f along k. Uh, and we have some eta. So. Uh, the left Khan extension of f along k is going to be a functor from d to e. And eta is going to be a natural transformation from um, f to the left Khan extension of f along k composed with k. All right, and this needs to satisfy. So this is the data, and it needs to satisfy some properties. So satisfying. All right. Um, if we have some other uh, extension of f along k, so what does this look like? This is we have f and k. And then an extension is going to be some functor, we'll say g, together with a, um, with a, I use gamma, with a natural transformation from f to g composed with k. Uh, and I want this to be um, equal to this. So here I have D, here I have K. All right, so I have the left Khan extension of F, and then I have G, and then I have the natural transformation that comes with the left Khan extension, eta, and then I want there to exist a unique natural transformation, say alpha from the left count extension to G. Um, so what I'm really asking is that uh, this, given, given any extension G and natural transformation like, of this form, I want this natural transformation to factor uniquely through eta. <coughs> OK. Yes. All right. So. Uh, similarly, we can ask for the right Khan extension exactly. So that's going to be a pair, right Khan extension of f along k. Uh, it's also going to come equipped with a natural transformation, uh, let's say mu. Um, such that, all right. And now instead, we're just going the other. We, everything is in the other direction. So, given some extension of f along k, uh, g, together with a natural transformation 
from G composed with K to F, I want this to uniquely factor through. Um, around like this. So, so I'm going to call this delta. Okay, so now I have the right Khan extension of f along k, and then g, and now I have mu going this way, and I want delta to uniquely factor through mu. Uh, so there exists a unique beta. OK, so let's um, see an example. All right, so we want a left Khan extension for, so left Khan extension for, uh, the functor from one into set and going to a singleton um, along, say, some functor from one into some other category, C. <coughs> um, uh, and let this functor, so this is, let picks out, picks out, um, an object x and c. So I'm abusing some notation here. I'm using um, this uh, for the functor as well, but sort of the information of this functor is precisely picking an object in c. All right. So uh, is this is given by, let's see. So we have one, we have set. And we have C. So I've got this goes to a singleton. I've got this functor x, which picks out the object x. The left Khan extension here is uh, the representable functor for x. With OK, so I have to say what um, this has to be equipped to some natural transformation here. Uh, and let's, what did I call it here? I call it eta. So with eta equal to um, the identity on x. Uh, and we should say, so we need to say what this natural transformation is. That means we need a component for each object in here, but there's only one object in here, which I'm going to abusively also call um, asterisks. Uh, and so that compo the component of this natural transformation is going to send the singleton, so it has to go from the image under this functor to the image under this functor. This functor just goes to the singleton set, which I'm also calling asterisk. And it needs to send. So it needs to go from this to, uh, maybe I'll spell this out in full. It needs to go from star to, well, if I do this, then the image of the, sing the only object in here under this composition is the set of maps from x to itself. And what does this do? I want to send star. Now, star is the element of this star. And I want to send it to the identity on x, which is also in here. OK, so this is a natural transformation between these functors. There's nothing to check. Um, all right, so let's consider 
some other pair uh, so some other pair is going to be an extending functor f together with a natural transformation from star to uh, to f composed with x. <coughs> okay. By the Unita lemma, we have that uh, natural transformations from this represented functor to f are in bijection with fx. That's the statement of the unit dilemma. <coughs> uh, and in particular, um, an element x in here corresponds across this bijection um, to psi x, the natural transformation psi x, which goes from x blank to f um, such that uh, on the x component, it sends the identity of x to x. All right, this was how we defined this bijection as part of the Yonai dilemma. All right. So a natural transformation from, um, so a natural transformation of this form, gamma, from star to f composed with x is determined, again, you only need to say what it does on the single object in here, is determined by gamma star, which goes from um, all right, star to fx, and it sends the, um, the single element in there to some x in fx. Great. So gamma factors uniquely through this um, idx, so this natural transformation, well, let's, let's, let's say eta. By, all right. So we have one. There's a functor to set. It's bigger. There's one. There's a functor to set. Star. You see. Functor picking out x. Here we have. Um, Cx blank. Here we have f. OK, this is our eta. And this is um, psi x. Um, and this is equal to. What's the point here? Um, saying where this goes to picks out an element, picking out such an element precisely gives you a natural transformation, a unique natural transformation from here to this functor. Um, and so there is only one such natural transformation, so this choice is unique. 
Um, OK, so the uh, representable functor is an example of a Khan extension. There you go. I had an example. Um, if we replace c in this, so if just everywhere in here we replace c with c up, uh, we get the other representable functor for x, c blank x, as a left Khan extension. So we can get both representable functors as a left Khan extension. We get the other one by putting C op in here. OK. Uh, hmm? No, no, it's still a left Khan extension. And, uh, I think. I'm pretty sure I checked this yesterday, because I also thought it should be the other way. But all right. Uh, and also that gamma is just the composition of that. Yeah, ga gamma is the composition of these yeah, transformations. Well, sort of right, because because this is a natural transformation from one to set, and this is a natural transformation from C to set, and so you do something called whiskering. But it's the thing you think it should be. Um, like you, you, um, you sort of put equality to x here, uh, to to one here, and then you put x in here, and so you you precompose this with the identity on on the x functor, and then you can compose it. All right. Uh, so. I'm going to do a quick detour um, to something I actually feel like this probably should have gone on the start before Khan extensions, but anyway. A quick detour. Adjoints are unique up to unique natural isomorphism. Um, so suppose that we have f is left adjoint to g, and f prime is left adjoint to g. Um, then f is naturally isomorphic to f prime uh, via a unique oops, unique uh, theta from f to f prime. Uh, commuting with um, the units and co-units. So I want this diagram to commute in particular. So this is so eta and epsilon are going to be my units and co-units. So I'm going to put primes depending on whether they correspond to f or f prime. <coughs> So uh, g f prime x. So these are two components of my um, unit. And here I'm going to put g theta of x. Uh, and the other diagram that I want to commute is, <coughs> so this is the diagram to show it commutes with the units. And this is a diagram to show that it commutes with the co-units. <coughs> Here I'm going to put eta gx. All right. So <coughs> proof. All right, well, we're starting with the information of these junctions. So in particular, we have natural isomorphisms um, from fxy to f in c from x to gy. This is because f is left adjoint to, to g. Um, 
But also, f prime is left to join to g, so we also have that this corresponds to maps from f prime x to y and t. OK. In particular, we have that d. Now, how did I do this one? All right. Um, maybe I want to put the prime here. Uh, so in particular, I have f prime x maps from f prime x to f prime x correspond to maps from x to g f prime x correspond to maps from f x to f prime of x. All right. Now, as usual, when we have something like this. We want to say what happens to the identity. Um, so if we take the identity on f prime x, all right. Under this first thing, where we're doing sort of the adjunction, um, and we know that the adjunction, the adjoint map to an identity map is like the unit or the co unit, depending on which way you're going. In this case, we get. The um, a to prime of x, so this is from x to x. OK, so we get this. Now we go back across this, um, but for the other one, and so we're going to get a to prime of x, and we get the adjoint map of that. We don't know in advance what this is um, because it was for a different adjunction. Um, so this is from fx to um, f g f prime x to f prime x, where this first map is f a to applied to a to prime of x, and this second map is epsilon f. So this is the unit. This is a component of the unit for uh, this adjunction, and this is the co-unit for the other adjunction. Um, and this is this is just using the general formula that we that we saw when we were talking about adjoints for taking a map to its adjoint map. We know how to do that given the unit and co-unit. Okay. So. Um, and in particular, because we know that these are adjoints, we know that they have unit co um. <coughs> All right, so we let, uh, we're going to let theta prime, uh, uh, theta of x um, be, OK, well, it needs to go from uh, g of fx to g of f prime x. And we have a map from fx to f prime x. So we're just going to let this be the map where we apply the functor g to um, a to the, the ad, this adjoint. Um, yeah. Right, because we want, oh, no, we don't. All right, we already had a g there. All right. All right, so this is going to go from, OK, so we're just taking this map, actually. All right, and that's from fx to f prime x. Great. Uh, this is natural in x because the, um, these, are, these isomorphisms all are. All right, so we have. We have, what do we have? We have g applied theta x, theta x. So this is this leg of this triangle that I would like to commute. Um, OK, well, I can expand that because I, have, um, I know what, what theta x is over here. So this is. G applied to uh, 
um, epsilon of f prime x composed with f of composition symbols in eta prime x composed with eta x. All right, and now I'm going to keep these things a bit longer. So I have x to gfx and by eta x. And then we go to, all right, so if we do g of f of, um, of this, so eta prime x goes from x to g f prime x. And if we do g f to it, then it goes from g f x to g f g f prime x. So we get g f g f prime x. And this is g f eta prime x. And then we go to, so now we want to do g applied to the co-unit um, or the f adjunction. So we should go from fg of something to something and then put g at the front of it. So we want to go from, we want to go from, we want to go to g of f prime of x because we're using the co-unit to cut out these two. G of eta f prime of x. All right. So this is, I'm just writing this out as a map. <coughs> <coughs> OK, so um, now I want to recall uh, one of these formulas that we, that the, one of these naturality formulas that we had. Um, for adjoints, so which one do I want? Uh, I didn't specify, definitely. Um, okay, so we had that F. B prime if we have some G and some Q, then the adjoint of this map is a map A to GB to GB prime. So here we have GQ. Here we have G bar. OK. So um, I'm going to note that I can just take this composition. So I've written this out in full here. But I can just consider this as one map. And this is another map. Um, and so across this, uh, so this map is, maybe I'm just going to take it up to no, I'll keep going here. So this is, well, this is adjoint to something. So I'm going to write down what, it, what, it's, what it's adjoint to. So across this thing I've written up here, this is adjoint to, um, let's see, we want fx. So I'm starting on this side and going back. Uh, and I'm using the adjunction for I'm using this adjunction now, not this one. I'm using the one for f and g. All right, so we I get map to fx uh, and then to fx and then to um, and then to f. G f prime x to f prime x. All right. All right.
right, but the adjoint map to, um, so this, this is going to be my, my little g over there, and this is going to be my um, little q, uh, except I'm starting with g adjoint and g of q, and I'm going back to g. So the adjoint of eta, prime, of eta x is just the identity. So this is the identity. Uh, and then I just take the g's off these to get, to get q back. So this is f of eta prime x, and this is epsilon uh, f prime x. OK, and this map is the adjoint of this map. So I'm going to put a line over it. Great. And now maybe I'll bring it up here. So this is, OK, well, I can get rid of that identity. So now this is just the map fx to fg f prime x to f prime x, uh, where this is f eta x prime, and this is epsilon f prime x. Uh, but I'm still dealing with the adjoint map here. OK. And now I want to use the other identity. Um, so I actually only worked out one of these in the, in the lectures and left the other one as an exercise. So the other one goes from, says that uh, the adjoint of a map A prime to A to GB, and we're going to call this P and F. The adjoint of this is from A, F. Uh, F A prime to F A to B, and this is going to be F P, and this is going to be F bar. All right. So we're using this identity. Um, and that's going to take this to. So we're now, we're now we're going from here to here. Uh, and so we want to go from. Sorry? Yeah, no, we're, going, we're going from, from here to here. So now we're going to get x to g f prime x. And this is going to be eta x prime. Uh, and this is going to go to x. I know it's going to go to uh, g f of prime of x. I'm going to go to the adjoint of of that map. But this is the identity now, and so now this is uh, x g f prime x eta x prime, and the identity g x. And this is eta prime x, which shows that this thing commutes. Because we started with this leg, and we've shown that it's equal to this leg. Um, all right. Exercise. Do the other triangle. All right. Yeah, I, I, it, sh it should be an entirely dual exercise. Um, all right. Um, all right. I'm going to state a proposition now, but I'm not going to prove it because time constraints. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show it. I just wanted to put it up, and um, you can look at the proof in, in real. So, proposition. If we fix uh, some functor k from c to d and a category 
e um, if left con extensions exist for all um, oh, I should say left con extensions along k exist for all functors from c to e <coughs> Um, then uh, left con extension is left adjoint to uh, k star that is pre-com position by k. Uh, uh, replace all left by right, also true. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we have the category of functors from D into E and the category of functors from C into E. Uh, we can pre-compose with K, and that gets us a functor from functors from D, D to E to functors from C to E, because we just, we're taking a functor from D to E, and before that, we're doing a functor from C to D. And we do the functor from D to E, and uh, so this is K upper star. All right. If every functor from C into E has a left con extension along K, then taking left con extension along K is left adjoint of this precomposition. Similarly, if if um, right con extensions along K exist for all functors from C into E, then right con extension is right adjoint. 2k star, so all right. <coughs> um, and I'm going to show an example of this. So let me erase this. All right, so recall that previously we've defined a, represent, a representation of a group to be a functor um, from the one object category uh, corresponding to the group into the category of vector spaces of F. So this, this has one object, it picks out a vector space, and then each element gets, each element of the group is a morphism here, and so it gets sent to a morphism of the vector space that you picked out, and because these are all invertible, the maps that you picked are all invertible. So you have the same information as a, as a group representation. All right. Given some subgroup, H and G, uh, there is an inclusion functor from h bar into g bar. It sends the one object to the one object, and it sends the morphisms, which are elements of the group, to the same elements. Um, it's closed under composition because the subgroup is closed under multiplication. All right. This induces uh, a pre-composition.
position functor, which we're going to call leadingly res for restriction, uh, g to h. So what's this going to do? It's going to take uh, functors from g to vector spaces over f to uh, functors from h to vector spaces over f. Right, so a representation is one of these. If we just stick this before it, we get a representation of h. So really, I should be calling this uh, rep g, and maybe I want to denote the field somewhere, and I should be calling this rep h. Field somewhere. All right. So uh, in fact, it is the case, I'm not going to show, but it is the case that this precomposition functor um, <coughs> uh, we, we have sort of the required extensions. Um, and so we get functors. We get uh, what I'm going to call ind for induction uh, going from rep h to rep g. And this is going to take uh, a vector, uh, a representation, so a vector space with an h action on it. Wait. Yeah, that's right. Uh, two, all right, we take the group ring over f and we tensor over the group ring for h with v. Uh, and similarly, we have co-induction from h to g. And that takes me from rep h to rep g. This mark is starting to die. Um, and that's going to take a representation to maps over uh, um, fh uh, from fg into v. All right. Uh, so, so what am I saying here? Maybe I'll move to the next board. So, uh, v uh, g is the um, no. So, what am I doing here? V is actually a functor. The way that I'm thinking about it. This is the uh, group ring over the field, or group algebra, I guess, um, over the field. Sorry? Yeah, so you, you, you for each element, I'm thinking about finite groups for now, but you take each element of the group. It corresponds to a, uh, a basis element. And then you can, it's an algebra because you can multiply elements using the group. All right. So uh, I want to say that this induction functor applied to V is the left Kahn extension over this restriction functor applied to V. Uh, and similarly, 
co-induction applied to some representation is the right kind of expansion over the restriction. So uh, we have rep G, rep H. We have restriction here, H, and then we have uh, induction, G to H, and we have co-induction from G to H uh, in these adjoints of that form. OK. Um, what time is it? All right. I'm going to take a break here because we're about to do uh, like the probably the longest proof we've done in this, the longest, most annoying, most sort of finicky proof that we've done in this um, series of lectures. And so we should take a break beforehand.